got much a, a good rounded perspective when I'm in a kitchen. And that's why it really winds me up when people send food back and it's a complaint and chefs stand around for five minutes just like disputing a complaint. It's like fucking hell. If you got that, like I, I remember seeing this like this pl- this beer base, like a fish stew come back and person said it's raw and i was i was um on the stills i was in coffees at the time so i've just graduated from kitchen porter to coffees but same sort of thing like ancillary role but still how old are you at this age like 15 maybe cool and this and this comes back and this and the chef's going like they say there's five bits of fish right two bits are clearly raw and i knew i mean no raw fish looks like and he goes well that bit's all right and i thought to myself yeah, but it's that, those bits aren't, and it's not really about that. It's about like saying, "Yeah, okay, we'll get another one on." If you had spent the time it took you to argue the point with the front of house person that this person's not happy with their food and had just put another dish on, that beer base would be halfway cooked by now, and the person would be fed in you know five minutes, as opposed to sitting there trying to prove your point because you think the food's everything and you think you know better than the front of house and the customer. And that's what you see, like being kitchen, kitchen porter and front of house. I think both those those sides help the chefs understand that the business is it's not just about your silo. And kitchen porters go between the two, and then business owners, if they can, and this is what um, um, Marco talks about uh, in one of his shows that he does. Like, you've seen it on YouTube, like the early shows about. Um, no it's actually in a boiling point when you talk about Gordon about Gordon going for his three stars about when you go for your three stars it's not about the food it's about everything you have to be able to expand and look at everything and I yeah. think that's a really interesting point that Roy brings up is that kitchen porters are that and it's really and actually most good chefs have been kitchen porters and actually like look at Noma like Noma have given their kitchen porter like equity in the company you know like the, and he's been there since day one you yeah. know so the I think it's I think the Marco point is really interesting because I think he's got a quote with Bourdain uh, when Bourdain goes to see him. I don't know the, the hotels escape me, but he's like people think of restaurants the food first, and he goes it's setting service food. That's yeah. what Marco says in that order. And I suppose what the kitchen porter can do is thread the needle through those three things because he or she is kind of like the octopus. Kind yeah, of they see, see everything. Seeing, yeah. seeing the whole thing. And that's the thing, you know, you know, that's the thing, you know, as a kitchen port, there are people out there called customers and every single customer coming back, every plate coming back is a story. They, they like yeah. the food. And that's another thing, you know, you're seeing plates of food that are completely empty. You, you two talk with the kitchen porter. So we did a thing um, where we used to put send out sides with every dish, every main course. So just like new potatoes and a green veg, you know, it was just costed into the, re- the menu. And the kitchen porter came up to me and once he said, do you know how much of those of that we throw away? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I just... It's just ridiculous," he said. "The amount of potatoes you're just throwing straight in the bin because you're sending them out to people that don't want them." Yeah. And we listened to that. So then we just said, "Right, what we'll do is we'll take the cost of the side out of the dish, and then we'll make a side dish which is cost like you pay for." And then, and within a week, the guys like you're wasting half as much. If like people are just because people happen to buy the potatoes, so they're going to eat them as opposed to just getting given them for, for nothing. Um, so things like that, you know, you learn a lot from the kitchen porters. You, you know, if you want to design a kitchen tomorrow and you've got a kitchen and you're going to say right we're going to knock down this kitchen and start again talk to the kitchen porters first because they'll be the ones that know like we had a classic an absolute classic case in the in the cafe is that we we redid the cafe and the drain so when you at the end of the night you mop the floors and then you squeegee them like you know with like it's like you'd use on a like window you know like a window screen wiper so you they're big long things you squeegee the water into the drains and the drain in the cafe was put and it went uphill, right? Right. And the kitchen porter, we had this like night, you know, we always have nights with the family, like a few drinks and that. And then the kitchen porter said to the old man, he's like, yeah, the, the old man's gone, oh, how's the new kitchen in the cafe? And the old man, and the kitchen porter's gone, um, yeah, it's really good. It's just that the drains, shame the drains go up. And the old man's closed the kitchen straight away and just said, listen, like, you know, I'm not, you know, I've been there at one in the morning cleaning a floor. And if I thought that the floor was, if the drain was higher than the fall of the floor, I would think this company doesn't appreciate me. So he closed it and we redid it. It cost us thousands, but like it was a really important thing. And that came from kitchen board. So, yeah, I mean, again, it's there, you know, any, any chef who cooks at home, who's got a wife or partner or boyfriend or whatever that, that um, 
has to clean up after them will know that chefs use kitchen porters a lot because yeah. I use about 20,000 things in the kitchen at home when I'm cooking. The um, Yeah, I think there's, it's a great <coughs> lesson across just everything in terms of, the, I think someone, um, William Kendall, who's the guy did Green and Blacks, yeah. and a really interesting guy based up in Suffolk, he said the most important employee in the business is the, is the newest one. Yeah. Because yeah. they see things that no one else sees. Yeah. And actually, you know, most people think, I'll oh, look after the senior leadership team, or, which is important, but actually seeing that other person... You, you talked, um, I think earlier, so, you know, I'm, I'm Rick Stein's fucking son. I should be able to make some more stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not I'd, given. I'd love, I'd love to talk about, um, you know, I listened to a couple of podcasts you'd, you, you'd been on, the, the Namaste one, yeah. which was brilliant. Um, I'd love to, you, you speak obviously incredibly highly of him, but I'd love to know how your kind of, um, I think you both said you're kind of both chaotic a little bit, which yeah. I relate to massively. Um, and... I would love to know how your kind of creative process is similar yet different. And I, maybe we could talk, I think you talked about like a, it was a, a, a miso, uh, what was the fish dish? Of the, yeah, Risa, the turbo miso. Turbo bit. miso yeah. with ham. Like that. Yeah. Maybe we can use that as a kind of. Well, I, can, I think like the, the, the jump off point really here with that is, you know, like, he's his style of food has been built up over years and years of, of like us traveling and, and like getting inspiration from France initially and then Asia and you know all over now or anywhere and um but also we've got Padso here the ports right here you know the fishing fleets right here we get fish and shellfish to the back door and that's kind of really unique to us here in Padso so and his his sort of um maxim is like fresh fish simply cooked right and you know, when I was in my, you know, after I'd done my training initially, I went off to do stages everywhere. And and I re really was trying to kind of test the null hypothesis that simple food is the best kind of food, I guess, what was I doing? You know, I was trying to say, like, can, can I find any evidence out there that I would prefer to be in a three-star Michelin kitchen or I'd rather be in a, you know, any other type of kitchen? Yeah. yeah. And... I did. I went out and did stages at places, and then came back and realised that actually I really like the food that we do. I really like the kind of that kind of buzzy food that's you know not like trying to be too much, too pretentious, but also means you get like a decent work life balance and and all that kind of stuff, which is I think important, especially in a family business, you know, where where you work with your family, you know, and we know the people that work for us aren't, you know, you know some of them. A, a guy said it really like. I don't know if you've ever seen the, remember The Littlest Hobo. It was a show about a, an Alsatian that, I think Mike Myers' his first ever TV show appearance. And it's a weird show, but it was like about an Alsatian and it like goes and helps somebody for the day who's got a problem, like a kid or whatever. And then it will move on. And the whole point is at the end of the day, it never stays like, they always want it to stay. And then it just, there's some song and it's like, yeah, 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 and then yeah. he, he buzzes off somewhere else. And me, we sat there with a couple of guys and we we're in the pub and they were leaving um to go to their next i think it was going to gordon's or wherever or the fat duck or somewhere and um and 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 he said he said oh you must get this all the time and i said what do you mean he goes well like you know people leave and you stay and i'm thinking yeah that's true like it is like you know and i said this to dad and he's like yeah like the amount of people that have come and then and, and gone because we've 50 years the restaurants have been open next year like that's a long old time and and then I just realized that I actually really like what I do and I really like what dad does and mum does. I really like their style of food. And then suddenly I realized that lots of people in London were like having the same kind of like the coming out of St. John and River Cafe and those those great restaurants and like really revering like Simon Hopkinson, Roly Lee, you know, like, you know, now like people like, you know, Jeremy, at Quo Vardis, these you know, the, 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 the restaurant in tra the London restaurants, these kind of simple places, like you think like, like Devonshire now, like is a good example of like, of like how much people like just love simplicity and you don't necessarily have to go for Michelin. You don't have to, you know, the time I spent in like on stage in Michel Brass, like picking through like flowers for their gargouille, which is like still to this day, one of like the best dishes I've ever seen. And like when I seen it being done in front of me and I got to be part of that, I was like so happy, but it was like happiness that I'd seen it, but also realization that it wasn't me. Mm. And I think that's where I like really kind of came back to dad and mum, you know, cause she's as much part of this restaurant as he is. And, and said, you know what? Like, I just want to work with you guys. I want to like push to keep this brand going. And like, I, I like it, you know, 
And it's interesting because I was at Michel Brass between um, where like Michel and Sebastian, so when Michel was handing over to Sebastian, they did this. Michel Brass is in Paris. Uh, uh, no, in Laguiole, in Aubrac, no. down in the south. So is that like a, is that a three, three I know star? You, that's yeah. the three. Okay, yeah. I know you because you did three. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, did, did the stage in Paris, but that was at a bistro. But this, uh, okay, yeah. So this was the, so yeah, where the, those really nice steak knives come from. So I was down there, and um, if you think of like. Um, Chef's table, and we're on a tangent here, but I'm going to keep going. Yeah, so yeah chef, I love, chef's ta- we go all around. Chef's this, table. So um, if you look at like that Netflix um, documentary style sh- uh, of, of, of food TV, right? That started in my mind, and so I'm sure like people who know it better than me will, will might have a different opinion. But that kind of depth of field look of like cinematic food that you get now on all those shows on Netflix started with two two things and I think it was the same guy but it was, they, they, they're very similar looking so one was um, Jiro I Dream of Sushi about the three mission star sushi guy who's like in his 80s in an underground station in, in, in Tokyo and I've been there and it's fucking unbelievable but like the most expensive meal because it goes about 25 minutes and costs about 500 quid <laughs> but it's just like also you just don't, they just don't it's, you just eat what you're given and you get the fuck out of there that's it um, the other one is um, was an entree le brass so between the brass and that was between Sebastian and Michel and they were they were handing over so for me being there at the same time they, the film was just released and then uh, was interesting because he was handing it over to his son, which is what dad's doing with us right now. And, um, and it was really like a three star and it's blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, like it was amazing. Like honestly, like one of the best experiences of my life. But I came back thinking like, I want to take over for my dad, like Sebastian's taking over for Michelle, but I don't want to do that kind of food. And weirdly, three years later, or a few years later, Sebastian handed back the stars that his dad had had three stars since like the, you know, the mid eighties or whatever. Um, and then it's changed the and he, he's gone simple and I'm not saying that that speaks to like what we do but my view of my dad is that he just likes things to be like simple you know where you like I spend more time talking to fishers fishermen farmers you know growers dairies you know going out and seeing product because I've grown up here like when when the Mertz bring shellfish into the back door, the Mertz are a family. Right now on May Day, they're in the Osses. They'll be right at the front. They, you know, Pete Mert is the head chef in the seafood restaurant. Johnny Mert brings crabs and lobsters to the back door. Johnny Mert's granddad and my granddad b- bought a boat together. My granddad had a manic depression. I never met him. He committed suicide. And um, he, but his therapy was to go out on a fishing boat and go lobster fishing, which. You speak to Johnny Mert and Johnny's like, if you think that was fucking therapy, I don't think coming. But like, but so like, we're so interconnected to this community um, that actually, like, from for me, it's not just about me and my family. It's about all the families in Padstow, and being here on May Day really makes you feel that because they're all celebrating today. But I'm not Padstonian, so I won't be. I don't get involved in that way. I'll, I'll go out, get pissed with them, but like, I'm not like this is their day. Mm. And this is the kind of thing that my dad goes on about a lot: the fishing community here, the farming community. We, we're into a lot with them, and I'd rather be that and be a multi generational restaurant business that just gets on with everybody and just like like keeps everyone like selling good lobsters, good crabs and everything like that, keeps the fishing fleet going, then trying to become a three mission star chef because it's just that it's more that's more about you. Espresso's is sponsored by supply chain software gurus Unleashed. It talks to your e-com and accounting software. It's helped islands cut admin time in half, get granular clarity on your margins, know where your stock is, don't miss availability. Brands like Candy Kittens, Tiny Rebel and Trip all use Unleashed and so should you.